Hi, I'm Steve DeVal from Thor Motor Coach. Welcome to Getting to Know Your RV. In this episode, we are getting to know the Super C. So there's a shiny new Omni or Magnitude in your driveway and you are ready to rock and roll, go hit the road, see some new places. So let's spend some time together in this video. We're gonna walk through every single feature. We're gonna open every bay. We're gonna show you how everything works, starting with your entry door, okay? So you have a couple of locks here. You have a top lock and a bottom lock and there is a difference. The bottom lock, and they open with keys on your ring, this is gonna lock the handle, all right? If you wanna lock just the handle only, you go ahead and lock this. If you'd like to lock the deadbolt, that is right up top. So deadbolt and you will lock the handle. So however much security you want, you have the options there, but we are gonna open up and inside, the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna take and turn on your battery disconnect switch. In this particular motorhome, it is a button that says main power. You hit the button, the red light comes on. Now all your 12 volt systems are fired up inside the motorhome. Now you can turn on your lights, you can turn on your inverter, and you're gonna to wanna to keep your battery disconnect switch in the on position the entire time you're camping. When we go over to the other side and hook up power, we'll talk about why to keep the switch on and when you'll wanna turn the switch to the off position and how to maintain your batteries. But what we're gonna do right now is start with all of the exciting things you have at your disposal right here. We're gonna start with our exterior entertainment center. Look at that, so you're outside, you maybe, maybe, maybe it's like a drive-in for you, right? Because you can't really go to the movies right now. How about a little, a little drive-in action? You got your TV, it is on a swivel, you can position it however you want. You have a Bluetooth soundbar down below, maybe you don't want to watch TV, maybe you want some music. Well, you can take your phone out and you can pair it just like you would pair any other device. You go ahead and pair that up, but let's say it is really bright and sunny, and unfortunately it's not bright and sunny today, and there is a glare on your TV, or maybe you have your camping chairs set up, and you have the fire pit out, and you want a little shade. Rapid Camp Plus is on your phone. We're gonna show you how to install it. You can put out your awning from outside, and it is a one-touch awning. You simply hit the extend button, out comes your power awning. There are lights down below. Let's turn the lights on. How about we do that awning lights right there on the arms. Notice it is an armless awning. So you don't have the arm sticking down, nothing to bang your head on. And on a day like today, this is gonna cast a nice glow on your campsite. Maybe you're coming back from an excursion. You can keep these lights on whether the awning is in or out. And when you are here at the campsite, you can go ahead and keep the awning out if it does get really windy and you take shelter inside and you forget to put the awning in, there are wind sensors so it will automatically retract. Um, and in the event that you do leave for the day, we recommend that you put your awning in. And all you have to do is simply hit the retract button on your Rapid Camp Plus and the awning will automatically go in. If you are going away for the day on an adventure, bring your awning in. At night, same drill, make sure that your awning is in in case a gust of wind comes up. The last thing you wanna do is damage your awning, damage your motorhome or have it fly off and damage uh, another motorhome. So there you go, the awning is going in and you can see that the lights will stay on. Nice setup out here, right? So moving on down, we have this bay right here. What you see here is the hydraulic system for your one-touch leveling jack. This is the heart of it. This is going to vary in location depending on your floor plan. It happens to be in this bay on this particular floor plan. Now, in the event that your jacks will not retract, this is where you're gonna to wanna to go. There are hydraulic lines in the back here and in the front. You'll take and you'll loosen these up and then you'll take and you will remove this cap and preferably a cordless tool at the correct bit and you'll take and run those up. We have a complete video on how to do this and we'll put that in the description below. This is our propane fill. So this is going to power your furnace. This is going to power your hot water. What you wanna do is get this filled wherever you get propane filled, be it a hardware store or a campsite. They're going to take and they're going to unscrew this. They're gonna hook up and it is the first time. This will be a new tank, so they are gonna to have to purge out all the air. You have a bleeder valve here, you have a gauge here, and you turn it on or off right here. Now keep in mind, when you're traveling with it on, that you do need to take note that there are certain bridges and tunnels and roadways where you cannot have the propane on. So you're gonna to wanna to take note of that. 
uh, as you plot out your route and know, okay, as we get to this point, we're going to need to turn the propane off. So make sure you're taking note of that. Turn it off when you get through that tunnel or over that bridge. You can go ahead and turn the propane on and you can uh, have hot water or your furnace again if it's a crisp, cool day. As we move along the side here, we do have some 110 exterior outlets so you can plug in a blender, whip up some smoothies, maybe plug in another device, maybe it's a shop vac, maybe it's an air compressor, whatever it is. Now, these are GFCI outlets, and in the event they are not working, when we go inside, we'll show you where you can find the GFCI receptacle and reset it. That way, if these aren't working, go and you hit the button, and these will power up. Right below, we have tires. And tires are very important um, because you want to make sure that you are maintaining your tire pressure. You want to make sure that they are at the proper inflation and you will find the proper inflation, the proper PSI on this label right here. You will find this on the motorhome and this is what you want to set your tires to. There is an inside and an outside tire. We do have valve stem extenders here. So when you are checking your pressure, you simply remove the cap and you can check the pressure for the inside and the outside tire. You're going to want to do that for all six. Do not check your tires when they are hot. Don't spend the day on the road pulling to your campsite or the rest stop and then check the tire pressure. That's not the way to do it. You want to check them before you hit the road. You want to check the tire pressure when they are cool. It's going to give you better gas mileage. It's going to help when you are towing and it's going to prevent any blowout. So make sure that you're maintaining the proper tire pressure on your tires. As we move on back, a nice storage bay here, very large storage bays. You have a light in each bay you can control again with your Rapid Camp Plus control from either out here or inside at the main control panel. One thing I really like about these Rotocast bays, especially on a Super C, is you're going to be off the road because you can get four wheel drive Super Cs, and we'll talk a little bit about that. They have a little drain plug. You can throw, you know, muddy boots or shoes or wherever you are in an adventure, maybe some bathing suits, whatever it is. Rinse these out, it'll drain through, and then you can go ahead and plug that back in. Or maybe you're at an awesome, maybe you're at a, a race or an event or a tailgate. You throw some ice in here, you throw your drinks in there, and it's going to stay nice and cool. It'll act for a cooler for you. And again, because it is nice rotocast material, they're not going to rot on you. These things are going to last forever. Right here is the fill for your fresh water tank. And this is real easy to fill up. You unscrew the cap. This is gonna fill up your fresh water tank so you have water when you are not connected to a city connection. You take your hose just like this. It is white with the blue stripe. You're gonna use this for all the water that uh, you are going to either be drinking. All your water fills, make sure you're using this hose. You can find them on uh, Amazon. You can find them at any camping store. You can buy them online. One is not included with your motorhome, but you simply take this end, you put it in here, you hook the other to your faucet. You turn your faucet on, this will fill up. There's a little vent in here. When you start to see this drip with a little water, you know you're full. You turn your spigot off, you pull out your hose, and you screw the cap back on, and now your fresh water tank is full. A couple of things to point out here. When you are running off of your fresh water tank, you want to make sure your water pump is on. That way it is pumping water out of the tank. When you're hooked up to the city connection, which is on the other side of the motorhome, you do not need to have your water pump on. So it depends on where you are, what you're camping, what the hookups are at your campsite, but that is how you fill your fresh water tank. Over on the other side, we'll show you how to drain it. Right here, this is a great feature. An exterior kitchen. Okay, so there's a couple things I, I want to point out here. So we're going to go over here. You have an exterior propane connection, right? So everything you need for some outdoor living is here. You can hook your exterior propane connection. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a grill, maybe it's a fire pit, whatever it is. Right up to here, uh, you turn the valve on. And if you're not getting the flow to the device that you like, that's because this is regulated. So take the regulator off your grill or your fire pit to make sure that you're getting maximum flow. So you got the grill set up, you got some dogs, some burgers, some ribs, some chicken, whatever it is you're cooking up. You have your fridge right here. You have your control in here. The nice thing is this is a, a 110 volt fridge here. So 
you'll make sure that uh, you're either running your generator or your shore power is connected to make sure you're getting uh, power to this, but you can keep your drinks cold. You have a sink here, you can rinse out uh, whatever you need. Maybe you're rinsing the drinks out right here. You do have uh, a low point drain in here. And one thing to point out with this exterior kitchen is the way that we have this run is to drain the sink. There's a water pump here, you press this button. <laughs> and that will take and it will drain the water in your sink. You have another GFCI outlet right here. And again, we'll show you if this isn't working, where to reset it inside. And then you do have your own little light out here, a little storage up in here. So a real great setup here, nice exterior kitchen. I'm gonna lock up over here and I will meet you on the back. We're gonna talk about towing and show you some of the features back here. Here on the back side, we're going to start at the top. We are going to work our way down. At the very top, you do have some marker lights. We'll show you how to turn those on. Right in the middle up top is your backup camera. And this is really a neat setup in these Super Cs. So one, you get a nice clear image behind you in the rear view mirror. The other great feature is there are actually microphones out here and you can adjust the volume on that mirror. So when you're pulling into a tight spot or maybe you're connecting a hitch to tow a vehicle, you can have a spotter back here. Say, come back a little more to the right, to the left to help you get uh, right into whatever you need to do perfectly. So that's a great feature to have. You have a nice window back here. You have your ladder. This ladder here is rated at 250 pounds. It takes you up to the roof. And so you're only gonna wanna get on your roof to do maintenance. You're gonna wanna check your seals. You're going to want to clean it before you winterize it, put it away for the year. Maybe you are at a really wooded area. There are a lot of birds flying overhead. You can get up there, you can scrub it off, but you're not gonna wanna take this out to the dirt bike track or wherever and set some chairs up top and get a great view. That's not what you're gonna wanna do. It's just climbing a ladder to do your maintenance. As we move on down, you do have your brake lights, you have your tail lights, your backup lights up nice and high, and you have place for your license plate. And now let's talk about hitching. Hitching and going. We got all kinds of stuff to talk about here. We have a seven pin connector. We have a four pin connector. The nice thing about your Super C is there is an integrated brake controller inside. I'll show you how to use it. Some great features that Ford has included on this F550 chassis. You can set uh, all kinds of parameters on that. We'll take you through when we get inside. Uh, one thing to talk about here, this is a 10,000 pound hitch with a 1,000 pound tongue wipe. So a couple of things to keep in mind when you are towing with this. One of the items you need to know is this yellow sticker right here. You're going to find this. The number you see here, this lets you know how much weight you can actually add to your motorhome. Another sticker you want to look for is this one. This is your gross vehicle weight rating, the GVWR. This is the maximum allowable weight of a fully loaded motorhome. Another number you need is your gross vehicle weight. This is the curb weight plus the cargo, your water, your passengers. That is everything except your tow vehicle. That would be your GCWR. That's your gross combined weight rating. And so to get your towing capacity, what you do is you take your GCWR and you subtract it from your GVW. But again, this is a 10,000 pound hitch, so you should have no trouble towing whatever it is you need to tow. As we work our way around on the other side, we have a lot of connections to show you. We're gonna hook up electric, we're gonna hook up cable, we're gonna hook up sewer, we're gonna hook up water. We have a lot to talk about on this side. We're gonna start with this bay right here. And it just so happens, this is where the 50 amp shore power cord is stored. The nice thing is, is it is detachable. So you can store it in any bay that you want. We have a couple connectors in here that we are going to show you as we hook up electric. This is a 50 amp coach and you're gonna get 50 amp service. So this is gonna power everything in here. Your air conditioners, your microwave, can blow dry your hair and run the toaster all at the same time. So to hook up, you open the little bay here for that. And this only goes in one, one way. So you put it in, you twist, and then you take the locking collar, you screw that down so you have a nice connection. And then you're gonna take this end over here that I have way out here. This is the end that goes into the receptacle at the campsite or wherever you happen to be. When you walk over to that breaker box, make sure that all those breakers are off and then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to plug in. Okay, so you're plugged in, you're running great. You get up, you move to the next campsite, it's only 30 amp service. What are you gonna do? Okay, well, you can use a connector just like this. 
This is not included with, uh, with your motor home, so you'll have to purchase wherever your camping accessories are sold, but the 50 amp shore power cord is. You go ahead, you plug this in. Now you can plug into a 30 amp receptacle. Same sort of situation where you make sure that the breakers are off, you plug in, then you can turn the breakers on. Same situation when you unplug, make sure the breakers are off, then unplug your motor home. So let's say we are storing for the winter and this all kind of ties into your battery disconnect switch which we showed you when you have it on and you leave it on the entire time, right? You turn it off when you are storing your motor home. The reason you leave it on is all the electrical systems are tied together. So the chassis battery is going to charge the house battery when the generator is on. That is going to charge your house batteries. When you are plugged into shore power, that is going to charge your house batteries. And that leads me to my next adapter here. So when you are storing for the winter and you hit the battery disconnect switch, there are a number of little devices in here such as clocks and detectors that will still have a small draw on that battery so you could potentially drain the battery so you'll have to physically disconnect those when you store them and the batteries are under the step the house batteries are right under the step as you walk in but if you have the luxury and the option and you have an adapter like this this will take you down at least in this one will take you down from 30 and you can plug it into just your 110 outlet in your house. So now you can get a charge running through here that is going to keep your batteries charged so they're not going to be dead the next time you go and start them. So a couple of things to think about here depending on how and where you store your motorhome. Right up here is one of the two fuel fills for your gas tank. This is diesel. So you can fill this tank and you can fill uh, the other tank. Just know that they are on this side on this motorhome, but you have two gas tanks on the Super Seas. Right down here is your cable connection. So if you have coax and you want to watch cable at the campground you're at, you're going to simply twist it in here just like you would at home and you run it over to the box. Now there is a certain way to tune in the cable channels, whether you want cable or over the air, just like you would at home. There are some settings and when we go inside and we talk entertainment, we'll show you how to set these up. We're going to move over. I have all kinds of props set up for you today. Let's talk about our plumbing systems here. So we have a few things going on. We have our black tank, we have an exterior shower, we have a gray tank, we have our city water connection. Uh, we have some drains back here. So this is where you're going to take and connect everything up. So let's say you have just pulled into the campground. Okay, so you, you, you hook up your electric, you get that hooked up. Now let's hook up some plumbing here. So let's hook up our city water connection. That's going to be right here. And again, we talked about using a hose just like this for your water. You take, you put your hose in here. You simply screw this tight. That is in. You're going to run this over to the spigot. You can put a filter on here if you want to. And then you turn on the spigot and now you have water from the campsite. Now remember when the, you're running off the campsite water, you do not need to turn your water pump on. Your water pump is turned on when you're running off the fresh water fill, which we did on the other side. A couple other props over here to show you here as we talk about our tank. So a few things to, to know here. Our black tank, when we dump our black tank, our black tank is our sewage. Our gray tank is our water from our showers and our sinks. And there's a certain order that you want to do it. And one of the nice things that uh, we have here for you, a shower that you're going to want to use and keep on hand after you uh, dump your tanks here. You also have a tank flush and your shower is your low point drain. So when uh, you're, you're draining uh, your tanks, you simply turn on your shower and you can set that there and that will drain your fresh water tank. So we're going to set this off to the side right now because we are going to use this in just a few minutes. There's a nice little place for it here, but I want to move it out of the way so I can show you how to flush, how you can flush your black tank. So let's hook up our sewage here. This is a new, uh, new motor home, but I would recommend on yours, you get some gloves just like this. Nice pair of gloves. Keep your hands safe because again, this is this is sewage. This actually tilts up and down, which is really, really nice. It makes it real easy to take the cap off. You can keep it stored in the up position. That way, when you're going down bumpy roads, nothing leaks or spills. So you unscrew the cap, set it off to the side. You tilt this down. It has a bayonet style connector. 
You take that off, you set that off to the side, you grab your hose, you run that up and you just line up the bayonet connectors, you twist, you lock, you take this end over to the dump, you put that in, you lift the valve, you put that in, and you want to make sure this isn't all kinked up like this. Lay it out as flat as you can. There are ramps that uh, some people have, so you know what that saying is about it runs downhill, so you can do that to keep it like that. That way everything goes. So when you're all set up and you have all your connections, you're going to take and you're going to pull your black tank. Pull your black tank, everything will drain out. When that is done, you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull your gray tank. After your gray tank flushes what's left inside, and that's why we do it in that order. Pull your black tank first, because that's the sewage. The cleaner water is your gray. That will flush everything out. When your tanks are empty, close your black handle, close your gray handle, undo your connector. Don't set it on the ground, because there might be still some water in it. You don't want that coming out. So kind of hold it like this. We'll hook this back up later. This is where we take that exterior shower. You turn that on. You put a little water in there. You rinse that out. You give it a good rinse. Then you kind of walk it up over to the dump and get the water out of the, of the rest of the hose here. And then I like to store them in a plastic container like this. That way, if there is any liquid in there, it will stay right in here. Now, while you are still hooked up to your black tank, if you want to flush your tank, that's real easy to do too. You're going to use a different hose. Do not use this white hose for drinking water. You're going to take and use a completely separate hose. Sometimes dump stations will have these hoses there for you, but you connect to this outlet right here. All right, you gotta make sure that your hose is hooked up. You turn the water on to this hose so it's coming through here and you pull your black handle. Now there's a little jet in there, it washes everything out. When you feel like, oh, okay, it's been good enough, it's been three, four, five minutes, you can go ahead, you can turn off the water, you can close your black tank and you are good to go and now you have dumped and flushed your tanks. You take, you put your cap right back on here. Lock that up. Move that right up into place. Disconnect all of your connections. You shut the bay. And just like that, you have successfully hooked up your electric and your plumbing to set up camp. It's just that easy. We have a few more bays and compartments to open. Before we do, I want to point out at the very top of this full wall slide, it looks like another power awning. It is not. That is actually a slide topper. So when you do put out your slide, and we'll show you how to do that when we move inside, that actually protects the top of your slide from leaves and sticks and debris. It will keep it dry if you are in a place and it just happens to downpour. You don't have to worry about water coming into your slide. So that is something that is standard on all of our motorhomes. As we talk about this hot exhaust that does get hot on a day like today where it's a crisp morning, that furnace would be a great thing to kick on. So this is your furnace exhaust. Not much you have to do here, but be aware that this does get hot. When you store for the winter, you may want to cover that up so little critters and bugs and spiders and mice don't get inside, but that is the exhaust for your furnace. As we move on down, when you're ready to drain your furnace, you do have the drains right in here, so you're just going to turn the valve and those will drain. Another nice storage bay. You have a little pass-through in here, so it'd be great for some fishing poles. You have the, the drain, the nice rotocast. Also in this bay, we have the brains for your slide-out. So in the event you can't get your slide-out in or if it really gets out of whack here, uh, this is where you're going to reset the motors. There's a little opening, there's a little button inside you're going to need a small screwdriver or a pencil, something like that, and you take and you press that button in. One, two, three, four, five, six, you hold it on the seventh, the light will turn green, and that will resync your motors. There's also a quick, easy step to do it when you are using your control pad inside to make sure that your motors are synced, and we'll talk about that a little more when we walk inside. We talked about two fuel fills. This is your other. Again, this runs off of diesel. And you do have to make sure that you're keeping up with your diesel exhaust fluid. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get to that point. You do have a lot of windows out here. We'll show you how to open them when we get inside. But essentially, you just twist the knob and they open awning style. So even if it is raining, it's not going to pour inside your window. You can still get a nice, uh, nice cross breeze and some ventilation. 
This is for your tankless hot water here. It's real nice to have tankless hot water. We'll show you the controls. Not a whole lot you have to do here, but there is a power switch right here on and off. You also have a fuse, so in the event that this isn't working, I just turned it on. You can go ahead and turn it on right there, but this is the hot water, tankless hot water. Gonna open another bay and look what we have here. We have our own in quiet diesel 6,000 watt generator. A couple things to talk about in this bay. We just mentioned DEF, your diesel exhaust fluid. You're going to keep that full here. There is a gauge on the dash and we walk through the dash. We'll show you how to check that, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that uh, you're keeping up with your diesel exhaust fluid. As we move on to our generator here, this is just a great tool for you to have. Uh, a lot of people ask, hey, can I use that while I'm running down the road? Most certainly you can turn this generator on while you're running down the road. That way you can keep your air conditioners on, you can keep uh, power to your fridge, to your microwave. Maybe you wanna heat up some popcorn while you're driving. You can do that if your generator is on. Um, a couple of things here to note that you do have uh, a monitor here to look at the hours on your generator. And after the first 20 hours, you're gonna wanna change your oil. This is your oil uh, check right here, but after 20 hours, change your oil. And then the regular service interval is every 150 hours. You do have a start button out here and it's real easy if you want to start it out here all you do is you hold the button down because you need to prime it the light is red you hold it up it's got to preheat and it's got to go through uh, a cycle here and then it will start up and one of the things that this coach does have is a transfer switch and what that does is it's sort of i always like to call it the electricity there it goes just like that so What your transfer switch will do is it monitors where the source of power is coming from. Is it coming from the generator or is it coming from shore power? It will take that signal and it will send it to your converter or your fuse box, which we'll talk about when we get inside. And then from there, it will distribute the 12 volt to the 12 volt systems and the uh, 110 to the 110 systems. So this is your generator. Uh, you can run it all the time. Um, you know, just keep in mind that you do have to do the maintenance on it. And we're opening another bay right over here. Nice storage bay. Again, you have a little bit of pass through up here. Uh, nice rotocast. Again, you can load whatever you need to load in here. And one last thing to point out here this is equipped with side view cameras. Nice view down the side. So when you turn on your directional, whether you're turning left or you're turning right, you're going to get a nice image of whatever is next to you and behind you in those blind spots because you really want to see all around you when you're driving something like this down the road. We're gonna take a look at the front and show you a few things up here. So you're gonna get keyless entry here. You can type in your code. You can program this. It comes with a factory default, but in the owner's manual, uh, we recommend that you do read it and you can go ahead and program that to your own code. Um, you have your mirror here, it is heated. You can adjust that inside just like you would in your normal car. The bottom one though, you do need to adjust yourself. You can put these in if you're into a tight spot, you want these out of the way. They do have marker lights there for you as well. Uh, as we open the door, I do want to point out when we talked about towing and the stickers that we showed you, this is where they are that give you the information that we showed you. So uh, if you need a quick reference, that's right here in the driver's door. We have a lot of stuff to show you in here. Uh, right now, though, I'm just going to open the hood because we have a lot of things to talk about up front under the hood. I want to point out your generator exhaust is here. This does get hot, so be aware that this is going to be very hot if your generator is running. And as I'm down here, you notice it says four by four. You can get your Super C in four wheel drive. Now the controls inside you have, I uh, will show you how to work that with the modes, but one thing that you do need to do and going through the manual that in the tire here, there are locking hubs. Each hub has to be locked in the same position. You can lock them or you can turn it to auto. Even in the manual it says, just leave them in auto and you're okay. But if you do the right one, you have to do the left one. If you do the left one, you do have to do the right one. Again, just put them in auto and you are good to go when you are shifting over to four wheel drive. We'll talk more about that system when we move in. But here we go, we are going to pop the hood. So you pull the hood release inside. This is on gas hinges. You hit the knob and up it comes. You have a nice light under here. 
But this is your 6.7 liter power stroke. This is just a beastly machine. And you open the hood and you can see we do have some batteries up here. You do have your coolant. Uh, you can check your oil, your transmission fluid, steering fluid. So just like you would on your regular car or truck, you're going to want to make sure that you are following the maintenance schedule that you are going to find in the owner's manual. But that is how you open the hood. This thing is just so much fun to drive. As we walk around to the other side, just a few more things to point out before we head in and set up camp. So over here, I wanna show you when you open the door, your light will go on here. This is kind of a nice entry light here. So when it's dark at night, nice lighting up as you go in, you have your mirror again over here that you adjust. And we do have another camera over here. We showed you the one on the other side. You also have one here. Again, you'll see that image when you hit your directional on left or right. And we do have another bay to open here. And this one opens, they are slam latch bays. All right, so you slam them shut. You do have a key here, they all lock. So a tip is to take and make sure that your bays are locked before you hit the road. Make sure everything is locked up. Inside there is a cable, you pull down, you lift up, and you are in this bay. So a nice bay here. Uh, a couple of things to point out here. Again, you do have a little pass through. This is your 2000 watt inverter right here. So you are equipped with an inverter. And what that is going to do is that is going to take the DC power and is going to change it over to AC power. So you can run some items in your motorhome, such as your refrigerator and your television. We'll talk about how to find out the specific outlets that it powers uh, throughout the course of this video. But we do have your inverter here and inside the doorway, which we are about to go in, there's a little switch where you can turn it on there. Uh, one thing to point out about your inverter when you do have it on, that it does draw the power down in your batteries. But one of the nice things about this is that you have an auto gen start you can control through Rapid Camp Plus. So you can set the parameters on that to trigger the generator to kick on when you reach a certain voltage that way your batteries won't be dead so you can run your inverter you can set the auto gen start that way you're not going to get stranded almost time for the for the main event here walking inside a lot of great options to show you here i do want to talk about this step though see how it comes out so it's going to come out every time you open this door but there's a switch inside that says step and if you press that button now your step stays out. So when you're at camp, you can keep it out so it's not constantly coming in and out and it's just gonna be a nice way for you to uh, go in and out without that coming in and out. But before you leave, please make sure that you hit that button so you're not driving with your step out because you could do some damage to another vehicle. You could do a lot of damage to your motor home and that's the last thing you wanna happen. So make sure that that step button is in the right position before you hit the road. Now it is time to walk inside and show you how to set up the inside, how to put out the slide rooms, how to put out the jacks, walk you through that fabulous dashboard. I'll meet you inside. Walking into the coach, here are a number of switches and gadgets and gizmos I want to talk about real quick. We showed you the inverter in the bay. This is the power for it. You simply turn it on right here. And again, that will drain your batteries. So you're going to want to set the auto gen start to kick on with voltage. We'll show you how to do that. This is your solar controller. You are equipped with solar straight from the factory what this is going to do is it is going to keep your batteries charged which are actually located right under the steps here but this will tell you the voltage coming in now you're not going to be able to run anything off of this this is simply to keep your batteries charged and it is pre-wired this is a 10 amp controller if you'd like to add another panel up top you most certainly can there is strapping for it and it is ready this is one of the remote wall plates for your Rapid Camp Plus system, which we will get into here in just a minute. As we are getting ready to set up camp, we have to put down our jacks and then we will put out our slides. We're in the RB34 and it is real easy to set up in this floor plan as your automatic one touch leveling jacks and your Rapid Camp Plus are right across from each other. The first thing you need to do before you put out your slides, put your jacks down. Make sure your ignition is running, you put your parking brake on, you come back to this panel, you hit your on button and you hit the auto button. Your jacks will come down and level out your coach. When it is done leveling, you'll get a nice green circle in the middle like a bullseye, letting you know you are A-OK. -okay. Now you can put these down manually. You press the manual button, you can bring down the front in pairs. 
You can bring down the rear in pairs, the same with the front or the left and the right. You can bring down the two on the left side or the two on the right side together when you need to manually level your motorhome. You want to make sure after the jacks are down, go ahead and give a walk around. Make sure that all the tires are indeed on the ground and firmly planted. It's also a good idea to carry jack pads with you because there are a number of campgrounds who do require that that you put those down when you are in their spots. You're also gonna to wanna to use jack pads in the event that you are setting up and the ground's not really solid. You're gonna to wanna to put those jack pads down so you don't sink your jacks into the mud. When you are ready to pull your jacks up, put it in your slide, you're going to take and put your slide wall in first and then you're gonna take and raise your jacks. Again, you wanna make sure that the motorhome is on, the parking brake is set and you simply hit the retract button. It says retract all jacks your jacks will indeed come up and you're ready to go on your way. Now our jacks are down, we are ready to put out our slide wall. You can do that a number of ways. You can use Rapid Camp Plus here from the main control screen, or you can download the app right here to your phone and you can put it down from outside the camp. So let's say that you are in a very tight camping spot and there are some trees or some branches and you want to stand to that side to make sure that you do indeed have enough clearance between your sidewall and the trees and the branches. Maybe it's a picnic table, a fire pit, whatever it is, you can do that when you connect to Rapid Camp. So let's show you how to do that first. You take and you go to the bottom gear, you hit the mobile app, it is called Vega Touch Mira. Once you download that, you'll type in, you'll look for this ID, and then you'll type in a pin, it will prompt you to reset the pin, which you will do, then it will be on your phone or your tablet, it works on Apple, it works on Android, and you can control your motor home from wherever you happen to be. So now that we have that set up, let's take you through what this does. This is going to be your home screen, you can turn all your lights on or off from here. You also have the controls for your uh, sky shade. You can open it or close it. It looks just like this, real nice source of natural light. Sleep under the stars if you're in the overhead bunk. You can monitor your tank levels from here, fresh gray, black, your propane tank. Um, you have heaters on your tank pads. You can control that from here if you want to, uh, if you're going into a frosty climate and you want to make sure that they don't freeze up, turn on your tank heaters. A lot of people ask because this is four wheel drive if this is indeed an all seasons coach. Well, you do have tank heaters on here, but if you are going to be taking this in climate, really, really uh, cold climate, you're going to want to take and add a lot of in extra insulation. You're going to want to do a uh, check on your plumbing. You're also going to want to add maybe some additional tank uh, heating pads, but this is not right now designed to be taken into sub-zero temperatures. Again, this is to keep your tanks freezing when you are in temperatures that are below 32 degrees. Uh, again, there's your water pump. You want that on when you are using your fresh water tank, okay? If you're dry camping, you're going to want to turn your water pump off, uh, turn it on, and then you turn your water pump off when you're hooked to the city water connection. Uh, here is your temperature, 60 uh, for your ACs, your front and your rear. Uh, you have your house battery, you can monitor your chassis battery, we talked about your auto gen start, you can have a shortcut key here, uh, or you can just go to the next button down, which is the little lightning bolt, and this is where you enable your auto gen start. We talked about a couple of triggers, such as with the voltage in your inverter, that is your low volts, and this is where you're going to start it at. You also have an HVAC load, and what you can do there is this will start your generator when your temperature gets to a certain level uh, and you can set all of that right here so you set your thermostat here but then you set your triggers and it will uh, when your thermostat hits that temperature then it will fire up your ac there's a lot of parameters on here how long you want it to run how many times you want it to try to start we do have a complete walk through every single function and feature that we are going to link in the description below the next button down is your lights every light can be controlled from here if it has an arrow on it like your living ceiling or your hallway, that is dimmable. That means you can just hold it down and you can dim the lights. Right here, your thermostat, you have uh, a front, you have a rear, uh, you have cool, you have your furnace, you have auto. So we'll take you through the modes here. Cool is just that, that's your air conditioner. You have a high and a low fan speed, your furnace, same, you have a high and a low or auto, which is a feature you can use where you have those really cold mornings and those nice afternoons as you get into late fall and early spring. So you can set it on auto so your furnace kicks on when it's cold in the morning and then your AC kicks on when it needs some cooling in the afternoon. A couple of things to keep in mind though, when you are setting the temperature of your air conditioning unit, you need to be aware of the 
outside temperature, how hot is it going to be, your ambient temperature, and what you like your AC to be set at. So let's say that it is 90 degrees outside. Okay, so where are you going to set your AC? If you're thinking I'm going to set it at 70, that's going to be a little too much. You don't want more than a 10 to 15 degree difference because what will happen if you try to cool down, let's say, from 90 to 70, it's too much for the air conditioners to handle and you'll end up freezing up the coils on top. And that's going to take hours and hours to defrost You'll never get your coach to the temperature you want, and you're not gonna you're not gonna be a real happy camper. So make sure that you're setting your thermostat about 10 to 15 degrees below. So if it is 90 degrees, uh, set it at 80. You could go down to 75, and then when it reaches that temperature, you take and you slowly go down a degree at a time until it gets to the temperature you want. The nice way to work around that though is just to be smart when you set your thermostat. When the mornings are cool, you can set your thermostat there. Uh, you can set it when you know you wake up in the morning and it's 50, 60 degrees outside. Set your thermostat to a nice comfortable 70 if that's where you like it. Then during the course of the day when the temperatures start to heat up, you'll be at 70. Your AC will be already running and maintaining that temperature. You can do it that way or when you go to bed, same thing. The nights get a little bit cooler. You can set your AC there and then that way it will stay nice and cool in your cabin and you won't freeze up your coils. As we move down to the fan button, it controls exactly that, controls your fans. You have a couple of fans throughout the motorhome. You can open the, the tops there. And the nice thing is, is they do have covers on some of these fans. That way, if you want some circulation in here, you can put the fan up and it won't rain as a cover on it. So you won't get water inside your uh, motorhome. Uh, this is your slides and we need to do that. We need to put out our slides, don't we? So you have uh, right down here, it'll tell you there's a slide on the driver's side. What you'll wanna do is you will hold your button down to extend your slide. You just hold it down and your slide will go out. When it is done, it will make a very specific noise. Uh, you'll hear the motor sync up because there are motors in here that are designed to do nothing more than bring your slide wall in and out. And there are times when, you know, things will happen. You'll take your finger off the button. You'll get distracted. Someone will be, oh, I, I dropped something. And, and sometimes what will happen is the motor will get out of sync. And then your wall will start to, start to, you know, get a little cockeyed there. So a great way to, to work around that. One, make sure it is fully extended. You can do that by holding that down after the wall is out three to five seconds. And so we just extended our wall. You can sync the motors up, little shortcut here. So start on the opposite button. So if you extended your walls, you'll start on the retract button. You'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you heard those gears line up. That means your motors are synced. So you can do that on your slides. It's a nice little short, shortcut for you. And outside we showed you the brain underneath and that is your that is your reset there. Uh, this is also where you can put out your patio awning and because the motor is running, you'll see a little lock button there. That means that the awning is locked. And when you hit the gear button, a number of different options here. You can have uh, the mobile app. This is where you connect to the mobile app. Uh, you can take and see if there's a fault in the system. Right now, everything is running perfectly as it should. And you can see everything is lined up in here and labeled with, uh, with green lights. And then as we go down to uh, our temperature, you can change to Fahrenheit uh, or Celsius, our floor plan. It tells you we're in the RB34. You can change your screen brightness. You have a cleaning mode. You can set the clock from here. So it's real handy. And uh, I do want to mention here uh, with uh, your slides and uh, your generator and your power, because you can monitor the power coming in here. It will tell you that you know, you're connected to uh, 50 amp service power um, when you put out your slides after you have your jacks down, you want to one, make sure your motor is running, but it's also a uh, good idea. You can be plugged into shore power or have your generator running. That way you're going to have the juice that you need to put your slide walls out. You need about 13.2 volts in order to put the slide wall out. So just make sure that you have plenty of power to power your motors. And that is a quick look at your Rapid Camp Plus control system. Now we're going to spin around. We're going to start at the overhead bunk. We're going to walk through, show you seating, sleeping, and storage options. We're starting in the very front in the cockpit. Lots of great toys up here, a lot of bells and whistles. We're gonna walk through a lot of this here. Over here, you have the controls for your heated remote mirrors. You have your windows up and down. You have power locks. 
You also have auto headlights. You can turn those to auto, and then when it gets dark, the lights will automatically pop on. Down below, you have your parking brake, and you have adjustable pedals. There is a little button you can control the pedals, and in or out, you can really dial in the perfect ride. You have uh, adjustable seats that you control. There are buttons on the side. You can control the lumbar. You can control the height. You can control the seat back, all right at the touch of a button, so you can really get comfortable as you rack up the miles on this. You have armrests as well, and you have a great, intuitive, easy-to-use dashboard. This is going to be your gear shift. You go ahead, you put it in gear. Uh, you do have drive modes right here to select. So do you want normal? You can also tow haul if you are towing and hauling. And we'll talk about your trailer brake controller in a minute. You also have eco if you'd like uh, to put it in eco mode. You have slippery when slippery conditions and you have deep snow and sand. And it says for improved performance, do four by four. Okay, so let's say that you do have deep snow and sand and you are going up the mountain passes. There's some snow, there's some sand. You wanna put it in four wheel drive. Well, right now it is in too high and that's where you're gonna keep it most of the time. You can also shift on the fly into four high. You also have four low you can use as well. Now keep in mind four low is for some real serious situations here. And it is recommended, and it's, this is all laid out in your owner's manual, you do not put it in four low and then travel above three miles per hour. Okay, this is for some real speed, nasty situations. You can put it in four high or four low, no matter what you do on the front wheels. We talked about the locking hubs. Just keep it in auto, and again, make sure that each hub on each wheel is set for you in auto and then again too high. As we move back over to the dashboard, we do have a lot of settings here. We talked about some of the safety and this is in your settings menu. There is a driver alert system. There is a pre-collision system and you can change the sensitivity of this. You have a lane keeping system. So if you start to drift off, you know, go over the dotted line, if you will, you are going to get a little warning and again you can change the sensitivity on that and there are a number of advanced settings you can go through as well through your display through your vehicle the lighting the locks uh, your towing alarms so there's a whole lot of settings in here you can go through again this is all going to be laid out in your manual in depth and in detail and we suggest that you read that through so you can really get a good understanding of how everything works i am just going to give you the nickel tour of this you have uh, trip meters you have a fuel gauge, uh, how many miles to empty. You can reset that. It tells you what mode you're in. Uh, towing. This is a great feature because this has an integrated trailer brake controller here. So when you're hooked up, you can go over to towing here. Your trailer status. We don't have anything hooked up right now, so we're not going to be able to use every feature here. But when you are towing, this is where you're going to want to go to this menu. You have trailer options as well. You have sway control. You can select the type of uh, trailer that you have. You can change settings from here. You can uh, change the brake effort as well. Uh, you have a plus or minus button. So that will can you change the braking effort. There's also a little gauge up here. You can name the type of trailer. You can add a trailer. You can call, this is going to be my Jeep or this is going to be my boat. You can put those in and then it, you preset those. It will, it will uh, already have those settings in for you. Um, connection checklist. It's going to make sure that you're here we go down to the checklist. All right. What are you towing? Is it a conventional trailer? Uh, sure it is. Okay. Are, is everything locked and ready to go? Is your wiring connected? So it takes you through a great step-by-step process and how to do this. Are your lights functioning correctly? And again, you do want to check your lights before you get out there. Do you have your safety chains? Is your tongue jack raised? Are your mirrors adjusted? This is where you adjust your uh, your setting. Brake trailer, again, we don't have anything hooked up, but this is where you control the uh, trailer brake gain. So a lot of settings in here when you're towing. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the main menu. We do have off-road. So you're not going to be going like crazy off-road. This isn't like a Raptor or a Tremor from Ford, but you will get uh, you will get some nice angles here and you'll be able to see uh, where you're at there. Uh, as we scroll down, again, a number of different settings that you can get into. So a lot of options here on this menu. And again, that's all controlled by this thumb pad over here. Down here, this is your cruise control on, off, set, resume, cancel, uh, add some speed, decrease your speed. Over on this side is the control for your radio, which you'll get into, your volume up, down, mute. You can skip tracks. 
Uh, this is for your Bluetooth. This is a voice activated system. If you hold down the button, you'll get a, a voice talking to you, which is actually kind of nice. You have your answer, you can hang up. Um, so all this we'll get into in just a second. I do want to walk you through the rest of your dash here. You do have a uh, traction control setting. You can see there right now it is off. Our parking brake is set. This is your tachometer. This will tell you what gear you're in. You have a uh, coolant temp. Uh, you have the temp of your vehicle, you have gas gauge, and you have a turbo gauge, and then you have your speedometer over on there. So it drives just like a, a normal truck. Again, there's your two-wheel, four-wheel settings, your vents. You have all sorts of buttons here. This is going to be your engine brake. You can see automatic engine brake on, engine brake off. There's your traction control. We can turn that off or on. Your hazard lights. Uh, this is your lane keeping system. If you'd like to turn your lane keeping system on or off, you can use this button right here. And then we get down into the meat and potatoes of the sync system. And this is really an amazing system because just about every feature you could ever want in an infotainment center is right here. This is, we're starting on your home screen, okay? So this is a, a nice navigation unit and you can go ahead and use uh, navigation, put in whatever it is you need to do and go wherever it is you need to go. Audio, you have a lot of different options here. Uh, you can choose your satellite, Sirius XM satellite radio. Uh, you hit your sources button, that'll bring up your AM, your FM. If you want Bluetooth, you want satellite radio, every channel you can think of in the world is on uh, Sirius XM satellite radio. And again, it all depends on the package that you do have. Uh, going back through here, it'll tell you what stations, uh, maybe you're feeling uh, Feeling like you're back in the 80s, you want uh, you want some first wave. A little loving rockets there, loving rockets. Got me through high school. All right, moving through, we have our phone. You can add your phone. This does have Bluetooth capabilities. Again, you go ahead and you can control those right through here once your phone is hooked up. Your navigation, that is nav, you hit that. That takes you right back to this screen. You can search, uh, put in whatever it is you need to search for. Oh, I want, uh, I'm looking for a gas station. I'm looking for a restaurant. Whatever it may be, you can type in there. You do have a number of different apps in here as well. All right, so let's talk about SiriusXM Travel Link. Since you do have SiriusXM Satellite Radio, your SiriusXM Travel Link, when you press that, this is gonna bring up a number of different options for you that will be really handy depending on where you're traveling and you're not familiar with the town. Uh, this will give you traffic updates, gas prices in the town. Maybe it's just a, a lousy day and you want to go catch a movie. You can get movie listings. What's the weather? Sports, ski conditions, where can I park? Weather alerts, there's your subscription info. And, and, and you can change these items up to uh, your preferences as well. Uh, as we go through mobile apps, what this is, and this is called AppLink. Um, and what you do is when you have AppLink installed, you hook your phone up and this will pull up apps that are compatible with this system. Uh, Pandora and Spotify. So once your phone is plugged in, you can use those apps with AppLink. The other great feature is when you plug your phone in, whether it is an Apple device or an Android device, that you do have Apple CarPlay and you do have Android Auto. So you're plugged in, you pull up Android Auto and it will connect for you and you can do the same thing with uh, your Apple CarPlay. So uh, some great settings there for you. Apparently I'm listening to a little anthrax. That's okay, I do like to rock out. I do like to rock out hard. Uh, so this is just a quick overview of how all of this works for you. There, my phone is now detected. Uh, you can add another phone and then you can go through your settings here and really customize whatever you need from the sound, your clock, your Bluetooth, uh, the satellite radio, 911 assist. So if you need 911, you can press that and that uh, will get you through to the local 911 wherever you are. Mobile apps, we hit on that. You can enable all of uh, that. It's a swipe screen, okay? So you can go ahead and swipe through here. Uh, automatic updates, yeah, you can connect Wi-Fi up here, information about your vehicle, your display, uh, your voice control. Um, so everything that you need is up here, your Ford Pass Connect. Uh, you download the Ford Pass Connect on your screen and you will be able to log in with an account and you put in your vehicle and it's a great way to keep your vehicle connected 
uh, with the system here and with Ford. So that is a quick overview of the SYNC 3. Again, very detailed information is in your manual. Please read it. Volume controls right down here. All right, you tell your passenger airbag is off. You can choose your media through here as well, your, your, your satellite radio. You can skip your tracks. Uh, you have presets, you can tune your radio this way, whether you're hooked up to the local stations or your Sirius XM satellite radio. Down here we have our standard HVAC controls, your fan, turn it on, turn it off, your defroster. Do you want it blowing at your face, at your feet, just at your feet? You have uh, your window defrost, your side rear camera window defrosters here. Recirculate the air, turn on your AC, your temperature controller works just like the one in your car. Over here another vent. This is nice. You do have uh, a 12 volt plug and you can also you know, plug in a laptop or something to keep it charged. Maybe you wanna type away while you're working. You can do that right through here. We do have another port down here, USB-C and USB-A. And this is where you plug in uh, when you wanna hook up to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Uh, we also have a nice large glove box. You can turn your passenger airbag off if you need to. Um, up here, we do have our mirror, and then we talked about that with towing, and this is a great, great feature. The display is right here for your mirror. It's also going to be the display for your turn signals when you are turning, and you have your volume controls up and down. See, there's the, the turn signal there. This is showing us off the right side. We're back to the rear camera, but you have volume, so you can turn that up, so when you have that spotter behind you, it helps you out, and it's really just where you would look when you were driving your car to see what's behind you. So it's really convenient to have. Right up above there, you have some different light controls. Um, you have the speakers for your Bluetooth system. You have some auxiliary switches if you would like to hook something else up. You have sun visors. So it's really a fully featured cockpit. Uh, we're gonna stand up. We're gonna take a look at the bunks and show you how to put up some privacy shades and take a complete look at your living area. Standing up in your living area, we're gonna start with the massive over the cab bunk. Easily sleep two people up here. We showed you how to operate the sky shade. All you need to do to make this into a bunk is you just put the cushion right into place here and you pop your ladder in and you climb up for a grand night's sleep. You also have uh, roller shades over here. You have a privacy curtain that will drag right across the top here. You have your own TV. But if you do want to share with everybody else, catch a favorite show, let me show you how this works. And we'll talk about a little more privacy to keep out the peepers. All right, so your TV over here, just unscrew this and it will swivel. You can drag that out. Just slide this down a little bit. There you go, now you have a TV. Maybe the people in the theater seats want to see it. Maybe the people in the dinette want to see it. Maybe you want to follow along in the kitchen with the favorite cooking show. So it's really convenient to have it on the swivel arm. A Couple of things to talk about here with the TV. So we showed you how to hook up your cable, right, outside. Now, there are a couple things you need to know and in this particular floor plan, your entertainment cabinet is going to be right here. So you have an HDMI distribution switch. All right, so if you are hooked up to the campground cable and you wanna tune in your cable channels, there's a switch up here on the wall. You press the button, you make sure the light is off. Now you can scan the television for the local cable channels at wherever you happen to be set up for the night. If you wanna check the over the air stations, maybe catch a local forecast, maybe see what the weather is gonna be like at uh, in your area where you're camping for the night, you go ahead and press that button, the light will be green. And now you have the ability to scan for the local channels. Now it does that through right up on top, there is the WineGuard Connect 2.0 4G hotspot and Wi-Fi extender. Gonna walk you through this because this is really a neat system to have. It is standard on your Super Cs. So it is your TV antenna, it's your radio antenna, and it is a 4G hotspot. So you download the WineGuard app, you get yourself all signed up with an account, there's an app you can scan, a QR code, that's going to be in the packet of owner's manuals, and we'll show you that uh, big black bag of owner's manuals here at the end of this video and what it does for you and some of the other things that you need to know about that. But you can either 
through there, sign up through a data plan with LineGuard. If you like the carrier you're with, all you have to do is get a SIM card. You climb up through the ladder we showed you and you can put the SIM card in. Now you have a 4G capability, so you can have your own hotspot off your data. You can also use it to tap into Wi-Fi. And this is going to be a great thing for you no matter where you are because as we get back to the HDMI distribution box, you can plug in a CD player, a DVD player, a Blu-ray player, a video game console, or a streaming device. That will be connected to the TVs, and then you can take that Wi-Fi signal or that hotspot you just created, and you can take and stream your favorite TV shows right here. So it's just that easy, and it is all located in that cabinet. Now, while we're up here, you do see these little uh, Velcro tabs here. This is your privacy curtain. And this is going to take and give you all the privacy you need. There's a couple of these here. You just take this out and the Velcro tabs and then you just stick this up and you just stick it around. There's one for each side. And then you, once you're all the way around here, you'll have a nice, a nice curtain for you for privacy. So at nighttime you can black out the sun, you can sleep in late. It's gonna be a great sleep in as late as you want, wake up as early as you want, black out the light with this curtain. It's just as easy as that. We have some theater seats over here. Each of them has a seat belt so you can ride here in style. Uh, while you're seated, you just sit down when you're camped out. There's a little lever on the side, look at that. Reclining theater seats. You can put the remote controls in here with a couple of ding-dongs or ho-hos or snowballs, maybe a sandwich, whatever you like to have with you. Nice cup holders there. Just that easy. Right across we have our Dream Dinette storage underneath, which is always great because you can never have too much storage. And underneath, uh, here underneath the Dream Dinette we have a 110 plug, so if you want to plug in um, some devices here because this does turn into a bed, we'll show you that. There's also a CO detector and propane detector as well. So uh, on top of the smoke detectors, the fire extinguisher, you do have a uh, carbon monoxide and a propane detector. If any of those do go off, please uh, exit the motorhome. As we move over to our Dream Dinette, okay, there are more seatbelts over here. You're sitting here, you have USB ports here, you have sunshades, you have roller shades, you have a control panel um, for your Rapid Camp Plus, you can turn on some lights there. You can open and close the sunshade from here. You're enjoying a meal. You're enjoying time together, but whew, we're all tired. It's time to go to bed. You can sleep right here on top of the giant over the cab bunk. All you need to do here is take and remove your cushions. Just like this, set them off to the side. You lift up. You lift up, there's a handle underneath, you take and you move the handle, you push the table down, and you put your cushions in place. Now I do want to draw your attention uh, over here, um, right here we do have a latch system, and one of the things, and let me set this up, um, people ask if they can hook child seats up to here, and that's what this is, it's a latch system. You run your cable down through there, and then you can put your uh, child seat there. So that's just a uh, nice feature to have in the morning. You're all done, you get your cushions out of the way, you put your sleeping bags back, you lift the table right back up. And now you have a nice place to eat breakfast. Some floor plans are equipped with this comfortable sofa, and just like the dinette, it's a great place to spend the day, and it quickly makes into a bed at night. The windows throughout your Omni or Magnitude are going to have a couple of different options for you. One is the sunshade. You can go ahead and pull the sunshade down. That'll take a lot of the glare out, and at night, if you'd like total privacy, you can take and close that as well. These are a good idea to keep closed when you're leaving for the day. As we talked about your air conditioning unit and not freezing it up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure these are closed up and that's gonna take and keep a lot of the heat out of your motorhome. If you'd like to open your windows, real easy to do. You simply turn the knob and your windows will open. Again, they open awning style so you can get some nice circulation through there. In the event you wanna take and remove your screens, they're held down by these tabs. When you wanna close the windows up, simply Turn it counterclockwise. 
Kitchen layouts are going to be a little bit different depending on your floor plan. It is laid out in this beautiful L shape in this RB34. All the features and functions are going to be the same here, with the exception of this flip up countertop. You do have that here, so if you need a little more room, you can put that up. You can put a cookbook there, and you are good to go. Just push the legs in, and you can drop it down and give yourself that walkway space. You do have solid surface countertops. Sink covers match. So if you would like uh, a little more room here, you can do that. Or if you'd like to use all the sink, you can take these and put these in in one of the number of storage cabinets under there. Look at that. You also have a garbage can under the sink. You go ahead and you set your sink covers into the cabinet. You have more cabinets over here, a nice drawer underneath for uh, pots and pans. This does not have an oven. You have a convection microwave. So we gave you a lot more storage room allowing you to do your cooking and baking in the convection microwave. This is really easy to use. Simply hit the convection button and then you can set your temperature. Oh, I'm going to bake these cookies at 350 degrees and then you can start your time and it's going to heat up. You put your cookies in, you set your timer and in 12 to 15 minutes you have fresh baked cookies from your convection microwave. You can do roast, you can do cinnamon rolls, you can do pasta and broccoli. Just those four things because that's all it shows on the sticker. Actually you can do a lot of things in here. We have an entire YouTube channel called Mobile Meals dedicated to all of the great things you can make in your motorhome using nothing more than your convection microwave and your cooktop. And this cooktop gives you the best of both worlds. You have a single burner induction cooktop. You have to make sure that it is magnetic. There's even a little pan with a magnet on it reminding you. And what I really like about this is a lot of people have their uh, tried and true cast iron skillet. And because it is cast iron, it is magnetic and you can use it on your induction cooktop. You can also use your, make sure your propane's on, you can use your gas burners. You have the bigger one and the smaller one, a quick boil, boil up, uh, boil up some creamed corn and some hot dogs. All right, maybe, maybe not the creamed corn. To light your stove, all you do, just like home, you turn it to light, you can hear the igniter. If we had propane in the unit, and again, this is in a unit, so the propane tank is empty, you'd see the nice flame there and you would be cooking with gas coffee in the morning. You need that, right? Boom! Pop-up outlet for you. Now, this is a GFCI outlet. In the event these aren't working, we'll show you how to reset that. Uh, it's in the bathroom. We'll show you how to reset that, just like your GFCI at home, but you have three plugs here, so whatever you need, or maybe you plug in your, your tablet or your phone right here. You follow along with the cooking show. Maybe it's Mobile Meals, the show that we've done for you. Plug in right there. Look at that all of the great features in your kitchen. There's the plug for your microwave. You have a lot of counter space. You even have a massive pantry in this particular floor plan and a residential fridge. So let's show you that. You have a giant residential refrigerator in here, stainless steel. Look at that. You have a freezer up top. You have an ice maker as well. Down below, you have large shelves. This is a residential refrigerator. You have your temperature controller right there so you can pack it full anything you want right in there. Over here, a large, large pantry. Look at that. Look at all the room in here. Boxes. Uh, these are the remotes for your TV that are in there. You can store them wherever you want. So all kinds of storage throughout. And that leads us into the bathroom. I think you'll like this very, very spacious bathroom. A couple of features to point out in the bathroom. You have a nice large glass door shower with skylight. You have your shower wand right there, so you can rinse the hair, rinse the feet. One thing to keep in mind when you are driving, make sure that you do keep that latched closed so the doors don't fly open when you're driving. You have a skylight above, gives you plenty of headroom. You have a robe hook over here. Straight across from me is your hot water. You simply press the button, turn it on, and you can control your temperature, how hot or how cold you want it. You have towel racks. You have a nice storage up above. You have a vent if you'd like a little, little fresh air in here. You turn the knob to turn that on and there's a switch to turn the fan on. Just like that. Let's talk a little toilet. Time for a little toilet talk here. All right, so we have a nice porcelain toilet here and it works a little bit different than the one at home. I mean, you still do what you gotta do in the toilet, obviously, but it flushes very differently. It is a foot flush model, so you would want to take and before you use it, just push down a little halfway, fill the bowl with water. After you're all done, you go ahead and you push 
all the way down and you will flush away into the tanks which we showed you how to drain. Now I do want to make sure you are aware that you cannot use regular toilet paper in this toilet. You need to use an RV toilet paper or a marine toilet paper so it breaks down in your tanks very easy. If you do use regular toilet paper there's a very 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 good chance you will gum up the works you're going to clog up your plumbing and it is not uh, it is not a treat to unclog so just make sure that you are using the correct toilet paper we have a medicine cabinet right over here we have our sink hot and cold we have a little storage down below you have uh, your water filter right over here you can change that you have your p-trap and you have your gfci we've talked about this a number of times this is what you're going to reset. So if there are outlets such as the ones outside, maybe your pop-up outlet, whatever it is isn't working, you come back here, it works just like the ones at home. If this green light is on like this, that means you need to reset it. You press the middle button, you reset it, the light goes off, and then those outlets should indeed work. I like this setup here because you can walk straight through through the bedroom, which we're going to show you next. We have a number of features to point out in the bedroom. We'll start as we walk in through the bathroom here. Large nightstands on both sides. You have USB charging ports. You have uh, 110 outlets and you have your Bluetooth coach radio system. This is app enabled so you can take and use the Bluetooth settings, connect to this. Notice you have speakers above the bed. You also have speakers up front in the cabin above the theater seats. So you can pipe your favorite music to wherever you want to in the motorhome. Nice, comfortable bed. You can put a CPAP machine in here if you do need to travel with one, which is one of the reasons why we made such large nightstands. You have a lot of storage below. You have a lot of storage above. You have an air conditioning unit back here as well. There are vents, so if you want to take and just have all the air come straight out of the air conditioning straight down, you can open the vents. Or if you want it to kind of flow through all four vents back here, you can close those and uh, have a little different circulation. So it all depends on what you want. We're going to spin around because there are a lot more options in this motorhome, including washer dryer prep. One of the features that you will find in the RB34 floor plan is it is prepped for a washer dryer combo unit. All you have to do is place your unit in here. There is a panel. All your connections are there. There's an outlet in here and suddenly you have your washer and dryer. If you'd rather have the closet space, you can most certainly use it for that. You have a light back here as well. Notice all the drawers. You have a lot of drawers back here for storage. You have a nice dresser top here with USB 110 uh, plugs. You also have a TV. If you'd like to watch a little TV while you lay in bed, you most certainly can. And underneath you have even more storage. There is one more thing back here I do want to talk about under the bed. We talked about draining your fresh water tank. There is a one inch valve here. You can take and twist that right under there and that will drain your fresh water tank. And right down here, we're going to just switch up here. I want to talk about your converter. In this particular floor plan under your bed, you are going to find your fuse box slash converter. And this is set up much like it is in an automotive application and much like it is in your house as you are going to have breakers and you are going to have fuses what this does is this is going to take the power coming into your unit whether you are plugged into shore power or whether you're running off the generator it is going to take that power send the 12 volt to the 12 volt items and send the 110 to the 110 items now, as you can see in this diagram right here, everything is clearly labeled. Over here on this panel, you do have your breaker switches. In the event that one of those is tripped, if something is not working, come on back and see if it is tripped. You reset it just like you do at the one in your house. Now, over on this side, you have your blade style automotive fuses. Now, see how those are labeled? It will actually tell you this is the exact amperage you want to put into this circuit. So if something is not working, if you do blow a fuse, make sure you are replacing it. If you're pulling out a 30, put a 30 in. If you say, oh, I only have a 10 with me, I'll put the 10 in now. Don't do it. Go to a store, buy yourself a 30. Make sure you're replacing the fuses with the proper amperage. The RB34 happens to have bunks. So if you have extra travelers with you who need a place to stay, this is where they are going to want to spend the night. You have your mattresses. You can, they're wrapped right now because we're still at the factory. You'll open these up. You put them in place. 
and you will take and put your ladder down here, climb on up. You also have privacy doors you can just undo on each side. You pull the ladder out and you can have all the privacy you want. You have a roller shade in the back. Now, let's say that you do not have guests. Let's say you're gonna be on the road for a long, long time and you wanna take a lot of clothes with you. All you do is you lift your bunk. You latch it right into place and you can hang all of your clothes right back in here. So it is a really nice option for you. Clothes or sleeping, or maybe you like to sleep in the clothes. I don't know. You can have it one way, both ways, or all ways right here with the bunks. Last thing I want to go over is what you will have in this black bag that comes with every Thor motor coach. Inside are all the manuals. We've talked about reading the Ford manual for... Uh, your four-wheel drive systems and for the SYNC 3 system. And we encourage that you do go through and read all of those owner's manuals and get very familiar with the motorhome that you are about to hit the road with and have a great time with. There are a couple other things in here uh, that we want to point out as well. You are going to have a couple of guides here. You do have a warranty guide from Thor Motor Coach with a 12-year structural, six-year lamination, and one-year limited warranty. You're going to go ahead and need to read this and keep up with maintenance to make sure you're keeping up with your warranties. You also have an owner's manual. Uh, you can read a lot of information in here. We covered a lot of the systems over the course of this video, but if you need a refresher course, you can go ahead and read this. Some illustrations as well. It's going to talk again. We talked about tires a little more in depth than tires here, so we encourage you to read this as well. You're also going to find a number of warranty slips for all the appliances in here. So make sure that you are filling those out as well and sending those in. If you would like more information on your specific motorhome, ThorMotorCoach.com, that is the website you need to go to. Click on the Owner's Resource tab. This is a screenshot of it right here. You get yourself signed up for an account. You put in your VIN number, you create your account. Now you have access to information about your specific build. You are going to be able to get schematics and diagrams and quick start guides, a lot of information that you would love to love to know about. We have a uh, product video tutorials we've talked about, such as our Rapid Camp Plus system. So all of that is at your fingertips. It's absolutely free to sign up. So we encourage you to sign up for our owner's resources. That way you have all the knowledge you need to know before you set off in your Super C to whatever place your heart desires. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.